Fantasy freaks and geeks, what's up? James Go here with you. 15 to 20 minutes is all I need to walk you through this wacky world of fantasy football. Yesterday, it was sleepers. Today, it is more sleepers. Of course, you're listening to the Sleeper King Football Podcast. Yesterday was all about wide receivers and quarterbacks. Today, it's all about running backs and tight ends. Although I say that with this caveat, I want to add a sleeper at the quarterback position, and that is where we shall begin. Let's talk about Sam Darnold taking on Detroit. The Lions' pass defense has been an absolute roller coaster this year. They allowed nearly 400 yards passing to Geno Smith. Then they turn around in the very next game. They force Dak Prescott into one of his worst games as a pro. It was crazy. What a turnaround it has been. And it's been like that. Honestly, it's been like that uh, for Detroit's um, defense all year long. It's been very up and down. But here's the thing. No Aiden Hutchinson. No Aiden Hutchinson forcing pressures and sacks. I mean, this guy was leading the league in sacks before he got injured, right? So no Aiden Hutchinson here. Um, the question becomes, can, there, can that shaky secondary, can they hold up in Detroit? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's going to be a hell of a lot harder. I know that. And here's the thing. Kevin O'Connell and the Minnesota Vikings are coming off of a bye week. I'm assuming KOC, with that extra week of preparation, is going to help Sam Darnold crack this Lions defense. I think he's in a really good spot, and Sam Darnold himself um, has been – He's been a little bit more up and down, but more up than down, certainly. Look, his last game, it was an absolute disastrous outing. I get it, right? We saw Sam Darnold, 179 yards passing, zero touchdowns with an interception. It was an absolute nightmare. Okay, fine. But overall, on the season, he has been solid. He's thrown for two-plus touchdowns in four of his first five games. We'll take that all day long at the quarterback position. And again, this game... I wonder if this game ends up being a little bit more higher scoring. I think Sam Darnold might be a solid sleeper play for you um, at the quarterback position. Okay, so now we shall move on to the running back spots. And let's talk about a deep sleeper first and talk about Tyler Goodson taking on Miami. Now, we're obviously going to keep an eye on the injury report. Jonathan Taylor missed practice on Wednesday and Thursday. Trey Sermon, meanwhile, is dealing with a knee injury, and he missed practice on Wednesday, although... He did return to practice in a limited capacity on Thursday. But I think regardless of whether or not Trey Sermon plays, Tyler Goodson, I think, is a, a, a very strong deep sleeper candidate for you. Again, taking on those Miami Dolphins. I don't think JT plays. He hasn't, play, he hasn't practiced in a minute here, and he didn't practice on Wednesday and Thursday. It might, by the time you listen to this, he might have already been ruled out. I'm not sure, but we're going to find out what's going on here. Friday practice report obviously will be hugely important. Um, but overall, the matchup is solid. The Dolphins have given up nine touchdowns to running backs through five games played. Uh, that's the second most scored allowed per game when you're taking a look at those touchdowns. They've also allowed the seventh most rush yards while being dead last in yards after contact allowed. Again, these are all good signs here for Tyler Goodson. Overall, they've allowed the third most fantasy points per game to the running back position. So let's say JT misses, and it's Trey Sermon and Tyler Goodson. I like Tyler Goodson a little bit more than Trey Sermon, y'all. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, so let's let's run that there as a deep sleeper. Um, let's talk about Tank Bigsby taking on the New England Patriots. Travis Etienne week to week with the hamstring injury. He did practice in a limited capacity on both Wednesday and Thursday, though. So that is very interesting to me. But even if Travis Etienne does go, I think it would be very smart to bring Etienne along slowly or maybe just flat out sit him down. I mean, I'm saying this is smart. This is one of the... <laughs> I don't know if this is one of the smarter, you know, uh, coaching staffs in the NFL. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I think it would be smart to bring back ETN slowly because, again, the guy behind him and Tank Bixby, I know he struggled last week, last week, but overall he has played really well. I mean, dude, the guy's averaging 7.2 yards per carry. Come on now. Uh, big plays have been commonplace for Tank Bigsby this year, and that pairs perfectly with New England. New England has been real generous in terms of giving up on uh, giving up big plays. They're tenth worst in explosive run rate allowed, right? So, 
You add in the eight touchdowns that New England has allowed as well to the running back position. And overall, they've allowed the fifth most fantasy points per game to that position group. So I think Tank Bigsby, regardless of the of the status of Travis Etienne, I think he's a very strong uh, sleeper candidate this week against New England. Okay, now if Etienne does get ruled out, can I also add in, I'm really interested in D. Ernest Johnston, uh, excuse me, D. Ernest Johnson as a deep sleeper candidate this week as well. Now, you might be shocked to know, with the fantasy community buzzing over Tank Bigsby, you will be shocked to know that Dearness Johnson has actually played more snaps than Tank Bigsby this year. You would never know it given the online discourse, but he's played more snaps and he's run significantly more routes. As a matter of fact, he's run 50% more routes, 46 routes, which is not a lot, but Bigsby's only run 30 routes, 30. That's, that's not enough. Um, and again, he's only seen one target on those 30. By the way, one target on 30 routes is is insane. That's <laughs> that's that's bonkers, man. One target on 30 routes, bro? Oh my goodness. Anyways, but that again, DJ is only a, a sleeper candidate if ETN misses the game. Okay, if ETN ends up playing, we're not interested in Dearness Johnson. But if he's out, I actually this is going to sound super hot take. I'm actually more interested in Dearness Johnson than Tank Bigsby, uh, believe it or not. Believe it or not. But I, I do think that Bigsby is obviously the safer play uh, if the game is going to be a lot tighter. Uh, and I think the game will be a little bit tighter here. So Tank Bigsby should get some work on the ground because Lord knows they ain't going to throw him the ball. <laughs> Lord knows. They're not going to throw our guy Tank Bigsby the football. Uh, all right, let's stay in that same game. Let's talk about Antonio Gibson. Ramondre Stevenson missed practice all last week. He did not practice on Wednesday or Thursday of this week either. Uh, again, keeping a very close eye on his Friday practice report. But uh, even if Ramondre does go, you do have to wonder how limited will Ramondre Stevenson be? Again, after missing practice for about a week and a half here. The Jaguars, meanwhile, they've given up the sixth most fantasy points per game to running backs. And it's because, why? It's because they've been getting burned out of the backfield by pass-catching running backs. They've allowed the third most receptions and the second most receiving yards to this position group. That would seemingly pair very well with Gibson's pass-catching ability. So I really like Antonio Gibson in this matchup. I think regardless of whether or not Ramondre plays, obviously if Ramondre doesn't play, I like him even more. Okay, let's talk about a deep sleeper candidate. And as a matter of fact, this guy's getting so much buzz and so much hype, I think you almost have to just graduate him to like regular sleeper status. But how about Kamani Vidal taking on Arizona? An unbelievably solid showing in his first NFL game last week. I mean, shoot, the guy took his first NFL touch to the crib. I mean, that's not bad. A super long catch and run score. Uh, what a debut, certainly for Kamani Vidal. Now, he only played on 25% of the snaps, but it is fair to wonder, could he see a slightly higher snap share uh, as he gets more acclimated to the pro game? I only bring this up because he's a rookie out of Troy getting his first NFL action. No disrespect to Troy, but I'm assuming the speed of the game is significantly different in the NFL when compared to Troy and their their you know conference opponents. Again, I just think, look, if Kamani Vidal ends up playing 40% of the snaps, I mean, it's Vidal to the moon, honestly. Now, I don't necessarily know if he gets there this game against Arizona, but shoot, he might. He might. Arizona's been extremely generous uh, on the ground as well. You know what? Here's the thing. Arizona's defense is not good, y'all. <laughs> they are not good. All right? Uh, and I do believe that this is one of the more glossed-over NFL storylines, honestly, thus far in this season, is how bad the Cardinals' defense actually is and how little people are talking about how bad they are. They're getting gashed through the air and on the ground, all right? They allow nearly 125 rush yards per game to the running back position. That's the second worst. They allow 4.7 yards per carry to the running back position. That's the 11th worst 
in the NFL. And through the air, my goodness, they're not very good either. So Kamani Vidal against Arizona. I really like his prospects. I think he's got a chance here uh, to pop off. How about Tyrone Tracy taking on Philadelphia? Devin Singletary was limited in practice Thursday as he is working back from his growing injury that did keep him out the last two games. But even if Singletary goes, I am actually comfortable playing Tracy uh, against Philadelphia because I, I, I want to chase a little bit of upside here. Tracy's been fantastic. He's looked awesome right? Everything, he's been as good as advertised and actually way better than advertised, to be honest with you. We weren't sure what his game would look like, you know, coming out of Purdue. We're sure now. This guy's, this guy's a dynamic player. I think he's been too good to not at least play in a 50-50 role. Now, we're going to see if the coaching staff agrees, because we know Brian Dable, Devin Singletary, you know, they, they've got that history together, you know, going all the way back to their Buffalo Bills days. Okay, I get it. And Singletary is solid as hell. Solid as hell. But Tyrone Tracy looked awesome. He looked dynamic. And it would be crazy. It'd be crazy to make him play 20 to 25% of the snaps again. I think it, I think it should be a 50-50 snap share. And I bet you it will be. Because, by the way, Devin Singletary working back from that growing injury, don't be surprised if they work him back a little bit slowly. By the way, this, uh, this matchup against Philadelphia, pretty good. Okay, The Eagles have allowed 5.0 yards per carry to opposing running backs at the fifth worst in the NFL. 152 scrimmage yards allowed to running backs. That ranks as the eighth most in the league as well. The Eagles have also allowed the second highest explosive run rate in the NFL, which is a, that's a pretty spicy stat, man, given the fact that uh, Tyrone Tracy does have some big playability. All right, deep sleeper now. How about Justice Hill taking on Tampa Bay? Oh, man, this one's this one is really difficult to read because Justice Hill is incredibly game script dependent, right? It is hugely important whether or not Tampa Bay is able to take a lead in this ball game or whether Baltimore just basically keeps everyone at bay and keeps this thing a very, very close score. Now, it's supposed to be a close score. And as a matter of fact, Baltimore is slightly favored here. Uh, but that being said, if Tampa Bay, Baltimore's defense hasn't been great. If Tampa Bay can push out a little bit of a lead here, uh, and I do see that potentially in the cards, Justice Hill's 100% in play, 100% in play. Um, look, the matchup is pretty ideal when we're talking about Hill's skill set. The Buccaneers have allowed the third most receptions and receiving yards to running backs. Again, let me say that again. The Bucs have allowed the third most receptions and the third most receiving yards to running backs. Like, this is working perfectly now with Justice Hill. Okay, by the way, this game has the fourth highest total of the week, which means there is an elevated touchdown exposure um, as well. Justice Hill, deep sleeper against Tampa Bay. All right, I'm going to stay in that same game, but we're going to flip over to the tight end now. There's, again, the tight end's tough, okay, but uh, Kate Otten uh, against Baltimore. The Ravens have allowed the fifth most fantasy points per game to the tight end spot, despite not giving up a single touchdown to the position group. If you're wondering, well, how if they haven't given up a touchdown, how are they giving up the fifth most fantasy points? They've given up the fourth most receptions and the second most yards per game to this position group this year. They've been getting burned on the reg in regards to receptions and receiving yards. So Kate Otten, I believe, is a pretty strong play because, again, projected point total of 49.5. OK, um, Tampa Bay projected to score 23 points. They're a slight home dog in this one. When you consider the point total and the fact that they're a home dog, those two would indicate that this is going to be a, a, a heavier than usual passing game script. Right. So, again, Kate Otten could get involved in that regards. Now, Kate, listen, Kate Otten has not been gangbusters. Kate, on, Kate on, he's not that dude. Okay, but he's on the field a lot, <laughs> and he has been solid. Okay, he's averaging his solid 9.45 PPR points per game over his last four games. Let's see if he can crack the code and get into the end zone against Baltimore. We're going to see. Time now to play Who the Fuck? 
All right, finally, it's another deep sleeper candidate. This one is Grant Calcaterra, or as I'm calling him, Calcaterra Cotta Warriors taking on the New York football giants. Okay, Dallas Goddard's got a hamstring injury, and it sounds like he's going to miss some time. As a matter of fact, beat reporter Jeff McClain is saying that he's going to miss a few weeks. Calcaterra is a 2022 six-round draft pick out of SMU. I bring this up because, man, he is a very interesting story. Very interesting story. He started his collegiate career at Oklahoma, right? And we know about Oklahoma's lineage of great tight ends, right? So he starts there, right? He played a year and a half there, but then my dude Calcaterra retires from football because of concussions. He goes on to sit out a year and a half. He's thinking a career in, in, in being an emergency medical technician in EMT, My dude's about to be an EMT, but then he's like, you know what, man, let me see if I got it. He gets medically cleared to play football, transfers to SMU to finish out school, and then makes it to the NFL as a sixth round pick for the Philadelphia Eagles. That is an incredible story. That's a cool story, man. That is a very cool story. Now, from a fantasy perspective, eyebrows were raised. Interest is peaked. Because he filled in for Goddard last week. He saw four targets, caught all four, and collected 67 yards. It's not a world-beating performance, but anytime you get double-digit points from a rando tight end, you'll take it. Okay? It's not a great matchup against the Giants as they give up the ninth-fewest fantasy points per game uh, to this position group. But at the same time, let's be real. They're not a high-quality, real-life defense. So I do believe that will open the door to some scoring opportunities as well. So let's see if he can crack into the end zone. I think that's probably his best chance to be fantasy-relevant this week. But again, if you are in need of a tight end, shoot, I actually might like Grant Calcaterra a little bit more than even like a Pat Fryermuth who's taken on the Jets. I mean, shoot, I don't know. Uh, Deep sleeper. Grant Calcaterra this week. All right, so there you go. That's the show. Those are your sleepers for the week. Uh, I hope everyone uh, scores as many fantasy points as they need to win their matchups this week. But I got to go, man. But in the interim, remember, it's never too late to chase your dreams. Peace.